Hello, and welcome to episode one of Serene Chaos. Hello everybody, my name is Alvaro Cortez Jr. I'm also known as Lance Danger on the internet in many of the places where I'm actively creating things and uploading artwork and such. And I want to share my creative process with everyone. And the creative process more specifically about Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord though it's a process that I apply to pretty much every project I make whether that be writing yes writing specifically or just drawing specifically it can be pretty much adapted to anything of that nature so I want to make this because a lot of people throughout the years have asked me how I make my comic and I just kind of wanted to share that creative process this is not exactly a how-to or a tutorial, but this is just basically my own personal creative process. Something that I just want to share and maybe it'll help you in whatever project you want to make. Or even better yet, if you have your own personal creative process, I wouldn't mind you sharing that at all if you would just want to share that in the comments section below whether it's you're hearing this from my website or from the Podomatic website I don't know if Podomatic has a actual comment section since uh, the podcasts that I listen to from Podomatic are usually from the website of the podcasters themselves I'm not entirely familiar with Podomatic but I am going to do my homework after this but anyway I am here to just share this creative process with anybody that's willing to listen really and because I have never done a podcast before which is kind of odd because I have ventured into many online things like blogging vlogging doing videos on YouTube and such making trailers for my comic and my projects and yet podcasting is something I've always wanted to do but never really 
got around to doing it for one reason or another. So here I am making my first attempt at podcasting and I hope you're all able to take something positive from this because that's what I want to do at the end of the day. Something positive. So as I mentioned before, people have asked me how I do my projects, how I do Warlord specifically as well. So I thought it was this would be a great opportunity to launch a podcast finally and answer this question in a more personal matter because I had written a couple of blogs about this at truthfulcomics.com. Plug time! Visit truthfulcomics.com. I will have I will provide links to truthfulcomics.com as well as the other corners of the interwebs that I dwell in. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. I thought this was the perfect time to start podcasting. Hopefully every week or every other week I'll go and delve more into this creative process. And once again, if you have your own process that you would like to share, you go ahead and do it. Because I'm doing this as much for helping people learn maybe a new technique they hadn't considered before, but for myself to learn as well. If I see some other technique that may complement my own as well. So feel free to share, feel free to comment, leave any kind of feedback you would like to leave now again this is not the right way of doing it it's not the wrong way of doing it it's simply my way of doing it and the way I do it is that first and foremost I devour books I am a bookworm especially when it comes to creative books books that teach you or at least point you in the right direction on how to write how to draw, how to color, things like that, uh, things of that nature that really you can draw upon each of those book and books and find something that will help complement your own style and your own creative outlet. It's all about having that open-mindedness to learn something new and go with it and maybe experiment a little and get out of your comfort zone and just expand your horizons and the first book I want to talk about is pre-production planning for video film and multimedia by Steve R Cartwright and you might be thinking right now what does pre-production for video film and multimedia have to do with comics well believe me it has more to do than what you might think at first Now, what does comics, video, film, and multimedia have in common? Well, in more cases than not, it's a visual medium, and many of the steps followed are very similar. It all comes down to planning and storyboarding or thumbnailing and just laying everything out. And of course, in my case, reading as much possible about the subject material at hand as well really helps. So... It, and that book, I really learned to do scheduling and budgeting as well. It had great resources like samples of how to break down your script and how to make a schedule, how to look out for settings and backgrounds. And that's something that you can easily apply as well for comic book creating because it's it's good to have a lot of reference material whether it's for props, books, apartments, houses, parks, nature, science fiction setting. It's good to already go into what you're going to draw with an idea of what you are going to draw and it is there is not a crime to actually have some reference to do that reference materials I know some artists just like to do it from scratch and from memory and again you do whatever works for yourself and whatever 
helps you creatively. At least in my case, I like to have that reference material, that resource to kind of look like I know what I'm doing at the moment and to make the story seem more real, more plausible in a way as well. So it is definitely important to have that in mind. And I also learned a very important rule in that book called the rule of 70, 30, 10. Now that is a rule that can be broken down for comics as well. And that rule is basically 70% of what you do would go into pre-production. And the way that I adapted that into comics, that would be coming up with an, the idea and then doing the draft or synopsis of the story. Any research you must do for the story and the reference material for artwork. And that also includes to have your tools of the trade up to date. And that is very important because there is nothing more irritating than doing something in traditional inks, for example, and midway through the page you run out and you realize you do not have another bottle of ink at your disposal. And the same thing goes with pencils. If you're penciling traditionally and you f make it to that final nibbit of that pencil and you see you have no other pencil available or if it's a mechanical pencil if you don't have refill leads for it and it's just going to make you waste time unnecessarily and the same goes also with if you're doing it digitally as well you always have to after every other time I save whatever I'm doing whether it's writing or coloring or making a digital line art or digital inking after every few minutes I save and I continue because you never know if there's going to be a blackout electricity goes out Photoshop may crash the computer itself may crash for one reason or another and if you haven't saved up to that point you're going to have to start all over again and believe me, when I first started out, I was there many times having to do things from scratch all over again. And it really is time consuming having to do something all over again. So it's good to plan ahead and for me personally, if I see if my stack of papers or pencils are about down to 30 to 20 percent already used up, I'll go ahead and restock on things because it's again, it's important to have those things at your disposal because if there's one thing I learned, especially with this pre-production book, is Good planning will save you both time and money, and I cannot stress that enough out of personal experience more than anything. Good planning will save you both time and money as well. And one thing you could do as well in that 70%, that could also go into another category that we'll talk about briefly but you could also if you wish write the entire script beforehand and that just depends on how you go around doing your creation if you're a one-man team then you can either write the whole script beforehand or you can do it the old school Marvel way which is basically have just the plot outline and draw the entire comic first and then after drawing the entire comic or the page or whatever then write the dialogue when you have the actual artwork done it all depends on how comfortable you feel and what helps you best do your own comic or your own story however you want to express that creativeness that you're doing but I would like to have the script done or at least mostly done at this stage in this stage of pre-production 
because it's good to at least know where you're headed to at the very least having the synopsis or first draft done and the 30 percent of this equation would go into post-production now and the way i adapted that into comic book form is that 30 percent would go into organizing how and where the book will be printed or uploaded for example if you want to print it are you going to print it in a copy shop are you going to do it in a printing shop are you going to do it on a print on demand online site there's many options you can choose from and again you choose whatever makes you more comfortable and most importantly what's within your budget as well and if you're not going to do a physical portion of that book yet you can also just upload it on the internet you can either do it on your own website or a webcomic site you can also try to do a digital comic as well and sell it through sites like drive through comics and if you can if you are able to apply to the guidelines of comiXology for example you can certainly try that way as well or you can try Amazon as well Amazon author I believe it's called the edition where you can upload your own novel you can also I believe upload your own digital comic as well now so you have plenty of options to choose from you you basically have no excuse whatsoever to just keep your creations in your drawer or just simply in your hard drive you can share it with the entire world now that's the beauty of the internet you can just as easily have someone reading it in your neighborhood as you can have somebody reading it in the Philippines or something like that it's really an incredible resource and of course in that 30 percent promotion will go into it that would be like if you have your own Facebook page if you have your own Twitter Tumblr linked in all those social media sites you can use it for your benefit to help get the word out there for your comic you can also visit blogs websites that review comics web comics and send out links and samples for people to review it and that's probably the most difficult part of the equation being able to do that because if you're a one-man team it's a little more difficult to kind of wear all those different hats and also be involved in the business and the promotional side of it as well it's easier I guess if you have a team to help you out with it but if you're by yourself it's good to keep that in mind that if you want people to find your book you have to go out there and promote it and promote it anywhere you can and if you can find the certain website that appeals to the demographic of the comic you're doing you can go to that website and forum and just promote the comic there as well and not yes spam your comic I mean go out there and become part of the community just share with the other creators read and comment what other creators have on those sites as well you don't want to be like a one person spam machine on these other websites it's good to build those connections because you never know if you'll find a future creative team there or just a peer that you can just talk with and have fun in this whole in the middle of this craziness because most artists myself included are very reclusive and don't go out as much and don't have that much human contact for one reason or another and it's good to have someone at least to just talk about these things and go over it and maybe even bounce ideas off, off of one another so it's important to really play up the social aspect in social media and finally the last equation of the 70 30 10 rule 10% 10 goes into the actual production and this is where the fun is for most of us because this is where basically the actual script is done the artwork is getting done the coloring everything that's related into actually making the comic is being done 
and sometimes it's very it drains your energy doing the pre-production and the post-production because again pre-production you're planning everything you want to do and in post-production again you have to wear the business hat you have to wear the PR hat the promotional hat you have you have to get your comic or your work or your web comic out there somehow for people to read it and discover it and so the creative process that's what we really want to get into just draw the thing already have these characters these wonderful world come to life and see it finally out there and finalize the whole finished product well 10% basically goes into that that's pretty much the fun part really because that's in the end what we all want to do just that creative aspect and have that creative process finally come to fruition and enjoy that as well and that's basically what I do in a nutshell sometimes I will go out of that rule because sometimes it is good to think out of the box and not confine yourself too much because then you'll just become formulaic and everything will feel like it just comes out ready made out of a conveyor belt which is not bad again to each their own I'm not saying that that's not a bad I'm not saying that it's a bad thing I'm just saying that for me I like to constantly challenge myself trying different things so sometimes I do step out of it and color outside of the lines if you know what I mean and I like to keep things fresh and interesting and just keep myself on my toes and not be too complacent about things now about other books that I've used as well the, um, the art aspect I have two books in Spanish which was the first two art books that I bought I never had any traditional art classes what I learned was mostly self-taught out of the old wizard magazines that had all these wonderful tutorials and how to's and in my artistic growth in high school out of my own money I bought two books and the titles are in Spanish it's called El Dibujo Descriptivo o Clásico which is loosely translated descriptive or classic drawing and it offered you co and taught you how to draw uh, with pencil and ink and brush and all that wonderful traditional medium and another book that I also have is Como Dibujar La Figura Humana which translated is literally how to draw the human figure and this book was very important for me in high school because it taught me the rudimentary basics of drawing the human figure and it really helped me a lot with my poses and whatnot when I was drawing my own comic book in these small notebooks that I would take to school like I would draw every day in those notebooks my comic Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord I actually did 50 issues of the comic like that with some of those issues actually being double sized specials so those were basically my training wheels and I learned all that I learned the art aspect from those two books and then later on when I was in college there was this book called how to become a master in college and this book has nothing to do really with the creative aspect of making comics or writing and things like that it's just this book that helped you transition easier from high school into college and high school um, and throughout school really I was a nerd and I had pretty good grades so when I graduated high school and went to college there was this course that made transitioning from high school into college life smoother and easier and not affect your grades and your and help your lifestyle to become a more efficient student and this book was amazing because it helped me so much to learn the importance of having a schedule 
and making time to stick with that schedule and how to make a budget as well it had a lot of great samples for you to track your budget in terms of how much money you spend on certain things like entertainment or food or transportation and basically helps you track down all the things that you spend your money in so you can know what you might be overspending in one area or where you can just get more economical stuff in another so you can know exactly how much money you have and where it's going how you're spending it and that is essential for you to help keep a budget to have your materials whether that be buying a new software for your Mac or computer or maybe a new tablet or traditional materials like pencils papers inks and of course it's very essential to have that budget as well to be able to print out your comic if you want to have that physical copy eventually as well so that book really helped me a lot in terms of making a schedule and making time to stick to it as well as making a budget and sticking to that as well and that is a very very important to keep in mind and another couple of books that I got that were gifts actually was a book called the art school how to paint and draw by Hazel Harrison and the complete idiot's guide to drawing and again these books were gifts and they were exceptional and really helped me a lot with experimenting and growing as an artist with these books I mostly learned composition and framing since it dealt mostly with portraits and paintings in the case of how to paint and draw and that definitely can be applied for doing covers and pinups and promotional work and printings as well it helped me experiment with digital painting only that I was using using digital brush strokes rather than actual traditional brush strokes and you can easily try to apply those traditional techniques into digital te digital techniques as well if you put the effort and time into learning and adapting into it and of course the complete idiots guys to drawing I learned basically the same things as well except that for this book it's actually very philosophical in nature and not only did it open my artistic soul but my mind as well and for those who have read some of my philosophical blogs at truthfulcomics.com and the hints of philosophical nature in my works as well this book was really up my alley it really was an amazing book that not only was I learning I also had a sense of calm and ease as well as I was learning and that was very important to me another book that I used was a birthday present and this book was Yo Kubert's comic book studio and I hope people don't dismiss it as a kid kind of book a kiddie book of how to make comics because this is a very practical guide to making your own comic and what I learned from this is that it's always good to remind yourself of the basics sometimes and I'm guilty of this myself we tend to overcomplicate things and then it's necessary to simply go back to the basics and remind yourself of this sometimes and it's best to remember that sometimes less is more sometimes you have to stop and take a step back to be able to move forward if that makes any kind of sense and I also had the book how to draw manga getting started and this book I bought it around the time I started making Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord into a webcomic I decided I wanted to experiment more and delve even more into the art of manga and anime I have always been a fan of Japanese animation and manga 
um, my first introduction to anime was pretty much Voltron and Robotech when I was a kid and of course G-Force which is b better known as Battle of the Planets but in the American version at first it was called G-Force and later on in the 90s uh, when I really started to draw seriously I started to implement more of that manga anime style mostly because of my favorite animes at the time Tekaman Blade, Sailor Moon, Rurouni Kenshin, Knights of the Zodiac those were all very influential shows and of course anime movies like Akira and yes a lot of fantastic movies Miyazaki of course really influenced in that so when I decided to have an even bigger influence with manga I decided to buy that book because I wanted to do it the right way I didn't want to simply copy my favorite mangaka or manga creator I didn't want to just be a Nobuhiro Watsuki clone for example those of you who follow anime and manga no Nobuhiro Watsuki is the creator of Rurouni Kenshin and Buso Renken, Buso Renken and I didn't want to just be somebody else's copy I wanted to learn more about it just delve into that culture into that genre so I bought that book and wanted to learn about the actual process about it as well and that book showed me the importance of doing backgrounds motions for characters and objects and most importantly for me the emotional portrayal in characters and that's something that sometimes is missing in American comics and it's not necessarily a bad thing and I'm not trying to slam any artist or anything like that all the contrary like some artists really excel at doing these wonderful figure drawings and backgrounds and these beautiful compositions but when it comes to like facial expressions or body language it's kind of stiff sometimes and kind of emotionless and with this book I kind of learned to loosen up more and help express the story through body language of the characters as well as the emotional facial reactions too and it's something that's really good to keep in mind that once again comics is a visual medium as well and it's good to show not tell I, pr I really do find it more connecting on an emotional and engaging level to just see a panel and see the facial reaction, the facial emotion and body language of someone that's extremely angry or extremely sad or happy rather than just have a character being drawn nicely there and have a text box saying I am mad or he was so mad or she was so sad and devastated etc again whatever works for the creator is fine whatever works for you is fine I personally enjoy reading something that also lets you take in visual cues as well from the characters and lastly a book that I also used that was very instrumental especially when I started doing web comics back in 2006 was the book how to color for comics by guru FX and I in 2006 was when I finally started experimenting more profoundly into digital painting before I didn't give digital painting much of a thought because I was more old school in the train of thinking of I want to do this traditional there's nothing that can replace traditional medium etc and then I decided to just open my mind and experiment and what did I have to lose I had my computer which I was using for mostly writing scripts and 
maybe making some designs here and there for the websites I had and maybe making mock versions like a mock-up of my comic to see how more or less it would look like and then I just decided to just cast my fears and insecurities away and just start doing it and once I started doing it I was understanding it more but it was very hit and miss again I was learning as I went back then there wasn't as many tutorials available for example on YouTube and in the internet and then I decided to buy that book when I saw it in the comic shop I used to frequent in at Puerto Rico Metro Comics and again the name is How to Color for Comics by Guru FX and it helped me improve light years it made me improve by leaps and bounds in the coloring department the results were getting really praised a lot of high praising for that for the coloring techniques I would use thanks to that book and eventually I would learn other techniques techniques as well and apply some of my own style as well as I would learn and know what was more comfortable for me and what would help project my creative vision as well for my comics so that was book was very instrumental for me in doing that and again you can either look for these books online you can probably find them at bookstores some of them might not be in print anymore so it'll be a little bit harder but the internet is such a wonderful place that you can find tutorials everywhere you can find blogs websites dedicated to showing you these things uh, as I mentioned YouTube has is an incredible resource for finding tutorials on how to write how to draw how to color composition framing and all that good stuff and I would like to end this first episode here and in the next episode I will be talking about my writing process uh, how I break down my scripts for example for my comics and my projects and I hope you if you've listened up to this point I hope you were able to get something positive from this because in the end that's what I want to do I just want to create something positive something worthwhile something worth your time something that will make you say maybe this kind of way is good for me to do it or maybe you want to share your own particular way of doing things so not only I can learn but other people can learn as well and that's just the gist of everything I just want you all to learn the same way I want to learn as well like in this life you can never learn everything you want to learn and I truly believe that so you have to really try to learn the most that you can every day, every moment that you can to just keep on doing what you love and being able to express yourself creatively and express yourself freely. And if you can draw something positive from this first episode or from further episodes of this podcast, is that I want you to draw upon that positivity and that creativity and that passion that you have for this craft that you want to put forth into the world if, or just for yourself just do something just do something with what you're doing and with what you've done and what you're capable of sharing with people and making this a better creative world for everyone that lives in it well that will be all for me this week thank you very much for listening through all this i hope you all have a wonderful and successful week and remember my friends stay creative this is alvaro cortez jr now you hear me and now you